I wanna show you why you should buy just four rental properties. Not 20, not 100, not a 1,000 unit empire. Nope, just four properties, which you could do in the next few years to set yourself up financially for life. Hey there, my name is Chad Carson. You can also call me Coach, and this is a channel all about getting out of the financial grind so you can do more of what matters. Fellow real estate YouTuber Michael Zuber over at One Rental at a Time talks a lot about the goal of buying just four rental properties because it's simple and achievable. I agree 100%. But in case you have your doubts about how powerful this simple strategy is, I want to show you some real numbers that may surprise you. Now, you're welcome to set your own goals or criteria for what makes a good real estate investment for you. But in this example, I'm going to give you a few criteria that'll make these four properties that you're buying work over the long run. The first is that you want to get a $200 per month or more cash flow. Now, cash flow is just the difference between what you collect in rent and what you pay out in your expenses. And this is the both the operating expenses like your taxes and insurance and maintenance and things like that, and also your mortgage payment. So everything that's going out of pocket, what's left over when it's all said and done. And we're going to set a goal of $200 per month. The second goal is we want to get a 30-year fixed financing mortgage. This means the interest rate that you're gonna pay is gonna be fixed for the entire 30 years. And at the end of 30 years, your loan will be completely paid down to zero. And typically you're gonna to have to put a 20, maybe 25% down payment as an investor to get one of these types of loans. The third criteria we wanna have is to try to get a 10% discount, maybe more. If you're a more experienced investor, getting a bigger discount is possible, but getting some kind of discount from the full value of the property. Now I know 2022 is a very competitive market and if you've never bought any properties, it might seem daunting to even get a property period, but just know that real estate goes in cycles and there's different markets have different, different kind of standards and what, what's going on in the market, but getting a property, if you really learn how to hunt and a lot of what I teach in, in courses and a lot of my students is to look off market and to be patient and make a lot of offers and eventually getting a property below its full value, especially if you're willing to do a little bit of work and do some repairs, then you can get a property at a discount. So that's gonna be a third goal. And then the fourth goal, which is very important, is buying in a quality location. So investors have this kind of rough rule of thumb where they look at a market and say, you know, there's A, B, C, D locations. And the A locations are the most expensive, the most expensive rent or price properties. The D locations are the, probably the cheapest properties for rent or price. So what we're talking about is getting kind of closer to the middle, maybe a little bit below the middle, C plus, B minus properties that have potential for some cash flow, but also have a potential for growth and stability over time. So we also want to have these properties go up in value if possible. So these goals put together form a type of recipe that give you a better chance of making these deals work and make become good investments over the long run. Now let's take a look at the numbers for these four properties that you're going to buy. So let's say you could buy a property for $150,000 that has a full value of about $170,000. Now I know just saying these numbers, and I have a lot of listeners all over the country, all over the world, and if you're in a high cost of living area, buying a property for $150,000 seems like an impossibility. And if you're in San Francisco or if you're in New York, that is an impossibility. But what we're talking about here, my assumption is that maybe we're buying in the South or the Midwest where there's a little bit more of a balance of ca good cash flow and price. And there are definitely small, very good cities that have good long term prospects that have values in the $200,000, $150,000 range. So it's out there. You got to look for it. But just want to give that caveat as I give you these numbers. So if you have a property that is worth $170,000 and you buy it for 150, you're going to put 25% down, which in this case is 37,500. Now let's also say you have some closing costs, so maybe $3,500 in closing costs, and we're going to keep it simple there and to say that's about a $41,000 total cash out of pocket. So you're also going to get a loan to, to pay for the balance of that, and that's 112,500, and at 4.2% interest for 30 years, that's a $550 payment. Because this is a rental property, we want to take a look at the rental numbers for this property that you just bought. So I'm going to assume that this property rents for about $1,300 per month. So remember, $170,000 full value, rent about $1,300 per month, and your operating expenses. So your taxes, your insurance, your maybe you're paying a management fee, maintenance, things like that on the property are about $500 per month. So when you subtract $500 from your $1,300 in rent, you have what's called a net operating income, or NOI, of $800 per month. And you can think about that as a number that's left over before you pay your mortgage payment. But you do have a mortgage in this case. Remember, we calculated that at $550 per month. 
So when you subtract 550 from 800, you get a $250 per month cash flow. That's also known as a net income after financing. If you watch some of my other videos that talk about how to run the numbers, that's a term I use as well. So 250 per month, that beats our goal of $200 per month, right? And over 12 months, that's a $3,000 per year cash flow. Now you might be curious if you're making $3,000 per year and you invested $41,000 into this property, what kind of cash on cash return are you getting? And in this case, just 3,000 divided by 41,000 is 7.3%. Now that's not a home run deal. I've had deals that do better than that, but that is a very solid cash on cash return, especially today in today's market in 2022. If you could get a 7.3% cash return, that is going to be pretty good. And so as you'll see with these four properties, they can work out pretty well over the long run. So the numbers I've just been sharing with you have been for one property, but remember the whole point of this is buying four properties. So if you did buy four, you would have a $600,000 total cost. That's $150,000 per property. But remember, you're also making a 25% down payment. So you'd have about $150,000 total in down payments and about $450,000 in loans. And then let's look at a summary of what four properties of rent and cash flow would look like. You'd have rent of $1,300 per property over a year. That's $15,600. And you have four of those. So that's about $62,400 in rent you'd be collecting on all four properties. But remember, you have expenses. That's not money you get to keep. You have operating expenses that you have to take out. And when you subtract those operating expenses, what's left over is the net operating income. And you had $800 per property. So over a year times 12, that's 9,600. And then for four properties, you have a net operating income of 38,400. But remember, we have one more expense. We have our mortgage payment. And so when we subtract our mortgage payment, our cash flow per month is 1,000 per month for all four of them or 250 per property. And over a year, you're making a cash flow of $12,000. Now you might ask the question, how long is it going to take you to buy those four properties? And a rough answer is going to be two to six years. Now if you could buy realistically every six months, that would be a pretty fast pace but you'd have to make sure you have the savings and the cash. That's really going to be your limiting factor. So if you had the ability to save a lot of cash or already had some cash, you could really knock out these purchases pretty quickly. But if you didn't, which is the case for most of us, right? We're really scrounging for cash and that might be our limiting factor here. Then you might have to wait a little bit longer, save up money, or maybe get more creative. And a lot of this channel, I talk about different ways, especially get started early if you don't have a lot of cash. And you could use things like the Burr strategy, and I'm going to have a video that I'm going to share in the video description below about five ways to get started with real estate investing. And the Burr strategy is one of those. It's a way to conserve your cash. So check that video out if you want to learn more about it. But it's a way to basically refinance and pull some of your cash back out and then use it for the next deal. And so that's one strategy you could use. You could also start with owner occupant deals. So like actually moving into the property, doing what's called a house hack or some of the other variations of house hacking, where you can get in with a smaller down payment as an owner occupant. And then later on, you could keep that property as a rental. So those are a couple different ideas. You could also think about creative financing or maybe getting partners if you don't have the cash. But my main point here is if you don't have the cash, but you're willing to go find the deals and hustle, there are ways to put deals together. You just might have to work a little bit harder. Now, next, I want to show you how these four simple rental properties can make you a multimillionaire if you're just patient and wait a little bit longer and do a few things into the future. But before I show you that, I want to recognize that in the last two to six years, as you've bought these four properties, just that in and of itself is a pretty big deal. You had to save up $150,000. You now own these properties that produce $1,000 per month or $12,000 per year. You now have $230,000 in equity. That's a combination of your $150,000 in down payments and the $80,000 that you got in discounts from the full price. That's $20,000 per property. So even if you stopped and just looked at what you did right now, it's a pretty big deal, but it gets even better. I want to show you three different scenarios for what you could do with your four rental properties. And the first is really simple. What if you just kept your properties as rentals for the next 30 years and you're going to make some cash flow? So maybe you just put that cash flow in the bank and spend the money or maybe reinvest it. But the main point is your loan that you have on those properties is going to pay off completely in 30 years. So you'll owe zero debt 30 years from now. But let's figure out how much wealth would you actually have and how much cash flow would you have at that 30 year point? Well, this is going to require a little bit of math with a financial calculator. And I'm going to show you here on my Android phone screen and I'll put a link to the free 
financial calculator that I use and put that in the video description. But follow along with me here. You started off with $170,000 full value for each property. And let's assume that we made a 4% appreciation rate. Now that's a little bit above what the average is in my area historically. But if you're in a really good neighborhood and a good region, it's not unreasonable to think you might be able to make a 4% appreciation rate. So in, in the calculator, you start with 170,000 as the present value. We're gonna put zero for the payments in this calculation. The future value is what we're trying to figure out. The annual rate is 4%, and we're gonna put 30 years for the number of periods and they're compounding on an annual basis. And so when you calculate the future value, you see that the, the value in 30 years is 551,000 or just over 551,000. Remember, you have four properties, so four times 551,000 is 2,204,000. That's how much wealth you have in the future 30 years from now. But remember, you also have some cash flow coming from these properties. And if you remember all the way back in the beginning, the net operating income was $38,400 total for those four properties. So let's assume that the growth is not quite as much as the price, but let's use a 3.2% growth rate for that income. Let's do that same calculation. Present value is 38,400, zero payments. Future value is what we're trying to figure out. Annual rate's 3.2% and there's 30 years. And so the future value or what kind of cash flow you'll be making 30 years in the future is around $100,000 per year. So you now have over $2.2 million in wealth and you have $100,000 per year in cash flow coming in. What can you do at this point? Well, you can just live off the income. You know, maybe you have some social security income and now you have this rental income and you can just live off that in your retirement. Or number two, you could refinance that, these properties. You have $2.2 million in value. So if you wanted bigger chunks of money, you could refinance that money tax-free and spend that money or reinvest that money and also live off the cash flow that you get above and beyond your debt at that point. Or the third, third thing you could do is sell the properties. So what if you just over a period of time sold off one at a time and then you used that money and lived off that money as well? So all of those are options because you have this wealth, because you have this income from four simple rental properties that you kept for 30 years. But there's actually some scenarios that could be even better. So let me look at a second scenario. Now in this scenario, I'm gonna assume that you're a little more impatient. You don't wanna wait 30 years to benefit from these properties. You actually want to maybe retire early or switch jobs or just take a sabbatical, a mini retirement year, and you wanna use these properties to do that. So how could you do that? So let's assume that 12 years out in the future is your kind of deadline date when you wanna do this. And remember you again, start with $170,000 property. So your properties would be worth, if they appreciate it at 4%, they'll be worth $272,000 12 years from now. But remember, you have four properties. And so four times 272,000 is a total value of just over a million dollars, $1,088,000. But you do still have some debt on these properties. They're 30 year loans. So what could we do about that if you wanted to pay these loans off completely and have a very stable, safe portfolio of these four properties? Or remember, you have $1,000 per month in cash flow coming in from the rental properties. Now let's say that you could scrounge up an extra $500 per month in savings to contribute towards paying these properties down a lot faster using what's called a debt snowball. Now, if you want to learn more about the rental property debt snowball, I have a whole video that explains it in much more detail, but for the long and short of it for now, if you spent an extra $1,500 per month, that's a thousand in cash flow from your properties and the extra 500 you're saving, and you applied that to just one of the mortgages at a time, you can actually accelerate the payment of that mortgage much sooner than 30 years. You can run the math sometime or watch that video to find out, but you'd probably pay the first one off in about six years or so, six or seven years, so much sooner. And now you have that 550 freed up from that one payment. You can now increase the amount of money that you're paying towards the second one. And you pay that one off a little bit faster than that. And then the third one, and the long and short of it is in about 12, 13 years, you'd have zero debt on those four loans and you now have the full amount of cash flow because you have no debt payment. So let's figure out what that would be. It started off with 38,400 in net operating income in year zero. And if that grew at 3.2%, we're gonna assume the rent grows a little bit slower, the cash flow grows a little bit slower than the price. And in 12 years, you'd have a $56,000 per year cash flow. So over a million dollars in wealth and 56,000 per year in cash flow 12 years from now, wherever you're starting. So what can you do at that point? You could just live off the income. If $56,000 per year works for you, then perfect. You don't have to work anymore. Your work is optional. 
Now, let's say that you do want to make more than 56000 That's a nice base. Well, you could use that as a foundation, as an income floor. And then maybe you could work part-time. You know, Maybe there's some job that you would enjoy doing on the side, a side hustle, start your own business, or be a teacher, or whatever the thing is that you want to do that makes a smaller salary than what you're making right now. But maybe an extra twenty or maybe forty or fifty thousand dollars per year doing this part-time job or this little business that's a passion business for you could supplement that fifty-six thousand, and now you have plenty of income for the rest of your life. So that's scenario two, which is pretty good, right? And I think a lot of you would say that makes total sense. There's one more scenario I want to share with you that could be even better in terms of the amount of wealth that you built if you wanted to keep growing. Now, in this third scenario, I'm going to assume you did the same thing as the prior scenario where you just hold the property for 12 years, but you have a different mindset. At that 12-year point, you're like, you know what? I want to keep growing. I don't want to just pay these properties off. I want to see how much bigger I can get in terms of growing my wealth even more. And if that's your goal, that's totally fine. There's lots of different approaches to personal finance and real estate investing. But let's look again where you would be 12 years from now. You start off with $170,000 value properties, and if those grow at 4%, you now have $272,000 per property. So times four, that's 1,088,000. Same as the prior scenario. But let's say, let's look at how much debt you have at that point. So you would still owe $83,600 per property. And I just used an amortization calculator, which you can Google or use a financial calculator like I showed you before to figure that out. But the total amount of debt you have is 334,400. That's 83,600 times four. And that's actually a pretty low loan to value. That's about 30% of what the properties are worth. So a very conservative amount of debt. And so you have an equity of 753,600. That's the total value of 1,088,000 minus your debt. So 753,000 in equity that's just sitting there that you could do something with. And you also have some cash flow. Remember, it started off at 12,000 a year. Let's say that grew to about 17,500 per year. So if you just analyze where are you now, like how optimal is this wealth building and this cash flow that you have, you're actually getting about a 2.3% cash on equity return or return on equity. That's the 17,500 divided by the $753,600 in equity that you have. That's a pretty low return. And so if your goal is to maximize that return and build more wealth, there's other ways that you could do that. One way you could build more wealth with your existing properties is to refinance them. So remember, you have a big gap between the value of $1,088,000 and the debt that you owe $334,000. And so you could go to a mortgage company and refinance and pull out some money. So just how much money could you pull out? Well, what if you got 70% loans on that full value that you have in those four properties? That would be about 761600 or just over $190,000 per property. And when you subtracted or paid off your existing debt of $334,000, that leaves you $427,600 in cash that you can go and reinvest in new properties. And that's cash that you pull out tax-free because you're borrowing that money. You're not selling the properties. You still own the properties. And now you can use that money to go buy more properties. And let's just say that you used it as a 25% down payment on about $1.7 million in new real estate. And because you've gotten better at this after 12 years of investing in real estate, let's say that you got properties that produced a 10% cash on cash return. So that $427,000 that you invest, you get a 10% return or $43,000 per year in cash flow on those new investment properties. But remember, you also have the existing properties, your four originals, and let's just say they make $250 per month after the refinance or $1,000 total. And so that's $12,000 per year that you're still making from those existing four rentals, plus your $43,000. So that's a total of $55,000 in cash flow. And it's kind of comparable to scenario where you paid off all the debt. Remember that you're making about $56,000 per year. So it's comparable in cash flow, but you have now have about $2.7 million in real estate that can continue to grow. So as it appreciates, as you pay the loans down, you're going to end up in the, uh, in the very end with more wealth if, than you would in the paying the debt off scenario. But there is a big if there. There's an asterisk that I want to point out. There's also risk. Anytime you borrow money, there's a chance that that could become a problem. It's not a huge risk with real estate. I'm okay with borrowing money, especially if you get long-term fixed debt, but there's always the risk. And so the, the fork in the road here would be, 
Do you want to take on more risk to grow even more in this scenario? Or do you want to go pay the debt off and just kind of be done and have a nice stable base of cash flow in the prior scenario? You know, I could keep on showing you even more scenarios and show what happens if you sold the properties and then 1031 exchanges, you could build even more wealth. But I want to pause here and just point out the whole goal of this video is to show you that you should just buy four rental properties. If you haven't done anything yet, just get to four because the end result, whether you stop 12 years from now and pay your properties off, whether you keep growing and compounding them, you will have choices at that point if you just get started. And it doesn't have to be this big, huge goal of taking over the world and owning thousands of units. You can be a multimillionaire producing tens of thousands of dollars in cash flow just by buying four rental properties. And so that's a strong case for getting started, for taking action. The point of this whole channel is helping you, the small and mighty real estate investor, build wealth, create cash flow, and have time, space in your life to do more of what matters. So I hope this example, I hope this, these scenarios have given you some inspiration, have shown you that this is a real thing that you can do. And if you're interested in how do you actually get started, like what is that next step, the next video that I want to share with you is called the five best real estate investing strategies for beginners. I'll have it above me here somewhere on the video that you can click on. I also have a link in the video description, but these are paths that you can take to get started. They're very achievable. They're very approachable. And I hope that you find it helpful and that you get started and let me know in the comments section what your plan is to get started buying your four rental properties. If you're new to the channel, be sure to hit the subscription button and the little bell so you don't miss anything. I have new podcast episodes that come out every Monday morning and I have new tutorial videos just like this that come out every Friday morning and I'd love to spend some more time with you. My name is Chad Carson. You can also call me Coach. This channel is all about helping you get out of the financial grind so that you can do more of what matters. See you in the next video.